From Green 960 in San Francisco, I'm Beth Greer, and this is your Supernatural Life. This show is part of the Green Morning, heard every Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific. And today's show is airing on Sunday, so I'd like to welcome any new listeners out there. My show is about taking natural living up a notch to supernatural living, and each week I interview top experts who show you ways to live a supernatural life. And my goal is to keep us all healthy, and one way to do that is is to become aware that everything, what we eat, touch, use to clean, build, and furnish our homes, as well as the invisible electronic pollution we're exposed to, is linked to our health and well-being. Well, my topic today is on the healing power of raw food. I've seen that eating a raw food diet can work miracles, from helping to eliminate a tumor in my own chest to curing people of high blood pressure, arthritis, and even MS. Today's show is about how raw food can cure diabetes, which happens to be the most widespread disease in human history, affecting more than 20% of the world's population. In the U.S. alone, an estimated 30 million adults and teens have diabetes, and an additional 57 million are walking around with pre-diabetes. Now, most doctors will tell you diabetes is incurable, and they'll put you on insulin. My guest today says there's another way. He's Michael Bedar, who has made five documentaries, including Simply Raw, Reversing Diabetes in 30 Days, a film that's essentially the opposite of Morgan Spurlock's film, Supersize Me. It's about how eating good food for 30 days can reverse a, a really serious health condition like diabetes. Michael is a certified live food nutrition instructor and is working on his master's in live food nutrition plant source nutrition, and spiritual nutrition, which I want to find out about what that is. He was a conscious living teacher at Gabriel Cousins Tree of Life Rejuvenation Center in Arizona for over five years and is now coordinating the Bay Area movement to reverse type 2 diabetes naturally with several community partners. Welcome to your Supernatural Life show, Michael. Oh, Thank you, Beth. It's great to be on this really um, wonderful show. Fantastic. I I loved your film, Um, it was so inspiring. Thanks. Everybody should see this, whether you have diabetes or you know someone with diabetes or even if you just want to get feeling better, for, you know, eliminating other things like aches and pains even because it was so dramatic. Um, so I want to know, why did you pick diabetes as the disease to cure by eating raw food? What 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 was the motivation there? Well, Beth, uh, first, thank you so much for being on the show. And um, I do want to say that the compliment that you gave to our film is something that uh, we hear uh, quite often. So it is making an impact. And so why I wanted to start making with this film, uh, this topic, is that I, I had a an elephant in the living room moment um, when I started looking around at the world and noticed that the estimate for how many people had diabetes in 2008 was 15% larger than the estimate in 2005. And the estimate in 2005 was 15% larger than the estimate in 2002. <laughs> and wow. I'm like, this is, and that's the first question we ask when we hear there's almost 30 million people in the United States with diabetes. Like, is that normal? Is that just how it's always been? So if you, if, if you find a change and a cause and a trend, you can certainly ask, well, what is the cause? So there's certainly something changed. And so a, a film that highlighted what has changed and then what would be the in, in essence, going back to prior to that change, what would we see happen with people? Are people's physiology still able to heal and be in that vital, robust stage that people in the healthy and non-diabetic physiology are? Um, or have we somehow lost something um, deeper than some of the, the basic things that we're, we were able to set up a condition for people were eating whole foods, live foods, organic foods for 30 days? I said, well, let's just see. You know, let's see if we can find a, a change and a factor that would bring people back. Uh-huh. Now, where did you find these six people the, who were insulin dependent? I, I was just so struck by that. Like, wh- how did you find them? How did you get them to participate? Well, there's two answers to that question. Um, one is we found them through actually an advertisement on Craigslist and a few other mainstream places that reach people. 
and we, we asked in this advertisement, um, are you someone who um, has a diagnosis of diabetes and um, has never even thought about using a alternative or holistic or nutritional uh, model or paradigm or approach? Because we wanted to show this could work for everybody. They had mm-hmm. to be just like like everybody, right. not the people that are already into listening to this show. <laughs> right. Yeah, they were your average kind of people who had no clue about about raw food or healthy foods. Seem, yeah, yeah, they were just, exactly, right. just the people. And um, we got 130 responses. We also set the criteria that uh, they had to be really willing to give it a try. Mm-hmm. And, um, and interviewed about 30 people looking for diversity, looking for some charisma in these participants. And we ended up with people from, from New York to California, from Michigan to Florida, from Nevada to Baltimore. And they were all diverse in terms of their age, their their race, their gender, and their background. So, and then the second answer is that uh, we found them. Um, how did we find them all in one place? We actually were at a center called the Tree of Life Rejuvenation Center, which was able to be the, the container where we could really know that they were going to be following this program and really feed their body. Um, we trust people, but we um, sub- set the container so that we we could know and give it some real validity of what, what they were putting in their body. Right. Now, to me, it looked like most of the people were off insulin in as little as two or three days, and that, that was really striking. Is that common? Well, that is one of the amazing things that was found. Um, the people giving it the scientific validity and the medical validity, Dr. Cousins and especially Dr. Gabriel Cousins, um, were what, we, what they share and what I see over and over in, in, um, in working with people is that there's cycles of healing and stabilization. So like the, in the, the first three to four days was a certain cycle. Yes, they were all off their insulin. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, all, well, all the type twos were. And we'll talk about that, I'm sure, in a second. Um, and then the 30 days was a total um, another cycle of, of stabilizing. And then there's cycles beyond that of like after the first 30 days, um, a really great direction of health, you know, after being off medication, then you start setting like the deep regenerating of the health of the cells and the, the body. And that happens. And I'm also on the DNA level. And we'll talk about that too. Um, and then, but even after 30 days, then there's still more cycles. So we're, we don't want to say, hey, you know, cure or, re- or totally reversed in, in three to four days. Mm-hmm. But off the medication, off the medication that which allows is, the body to have the next stage of, of right. stabilizing. And that's huge. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about type two and type one because there were some type one diabetics, and um, those are supposed to. I, I was so struck by the guy that, you know, he didn't realize he was type one until he was completely cured. Looked like, and now he's become a naturopath or he's get, going to school. He's so, in his fourth year now. It's quite impressive. Fantastic. Um, this was a participant. A participant from. From Baltimore. So, right. so uh, people who have type one um, should they be encouraged to go on this kind of diet? Do you think? Well, yes. I mean, what? First of all, anytime I talk about encouragement and everything, I'm talking about if you're on any kind of medication, or working with your your professional health practitioner. Um, when I'm saying what I'm saying as a recommendation is is first of all, I'm just on a radio show with you. And <laughs> second of all, I'm not I'm not a doctor. I'm a documentarian. Mm-hmm. Sure. So, that being said. What I saw with my eyes and with our cameras um, and have seen over and over from my, my teaching experience is that with the proper supervision on a live food we call phase one and we, we call anti-diabetogenic uh, live food cuisine, people who are even type 1 diabetics have huge improvements in their overall vitality, um, typically reduction the amount of insulin and medication they need to be taking um, safely, of course, again, supervised by their doctor. But that reduction is, is huge uh, in terms of, of life quality because when you're taking, you know, every little bit more insulin you take, it does more damage to your metabolic systems. So the difference from going from one of our participants who was type 1 since the time he was a child went from 70 units to 5 units in the 30 days. Mm-hmm. He was still on it, mm-hmm. you know, five units. But that difference makes a huge amount of difference in his lifespan, um, 
Side effects, I'm assuming, Side effects too. and the quality yeah. of the day. Uh-huh. Yes. So tell us, like, what a typical day might be like uh, in terms of food intake for for people who are on this path. Right. Um, these people were eating a, a, a raw foods diet called Rainbow Green Live Food Cuisine, phase one. And as it sounds, it's got the, all the colors of the rainbow. It's very important. And the basis is greens. So... Um, a, a, a breakfast might be, um, and what, what that means, by the way, phase one, it means, it means all the leafy green vegetables that you can find, um, all the, um, the sprouts and seeds that you might want to eat, um, sea vegetables, and low glycemic fruits, in this case meaning lemons, limes, uh, tomatoes, and avocados, mm-hmm. um, and a little bit of nuts. So with those ingredients, there's a whole wonderful culinary school of how to prepare breakfasts, lunch and dinners, and snacks and desserts. And, um, so mainly, though, it was eating what you would find in, in a garden made up in many different ways. But some simple things to think about are um, sprout salads with some lemon um, and some green salads with um, also the different colored um, in different kinds of chard and kale, some the red tip and things like that. But it doesn't, it's not like it sounds. You can also make breakfast torts and cakes, mm-hmm. um, pancakes and mu- waffles. But these are all prepared, like, for example, in a dehydrator for the texture of crunchy people like, um, in a blender made into a parfait or made into a smoothie, but um, the smoothie that's, that's green. Um, Right, because so, you have to make the food kind of appetizing. Um, otherwise, they're not going to they're, they're going to resist, right? Well, that's what exactly what happened in the film, and it's actually the actual preparation and talking about it isn't my strongest suit. Um, right. th- there's a wonderful live food movement uh, in the Bay Area and beyond. With like, I'll teach you everything. Right, and, um, and so I Michael, teach, we're going to yeah. take a, a short break right now, and when we come back, let's talk about some of the interesting things that happened during the film and what happened to the participants' lives and anything else you'd like to share with us. That's a do. Okay, Okay. great. We'll be right back. 